an eargasm of learning, and a no-fuss show. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast, where you can learn straightforward topics about branding, digital entrepreneurship, online business, and many more with your charming host, John Santos, along with inspiring entrepreneurs, creators, and thought leaders worldwide. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast with me, John Santos, and... Another new episode, meaning we have a new guest. I'm very excited. Our guest for today, an author. Guys, one of my favorite uh, points, TEDx and keynote speaker. So we will learn a lot from this person, a mindset and connection expert. Now, what that is, we will find out later. All right. Very beautiful. I love her smile. (laughs) Our very own special guest for today's episode. Let's all welcome Charity Hatterley. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I've said this off cam and I'll say it again. Thank you for joining us here in the Creative Talk podcast. Time difference, busy schedule, but you're here spending time with us. Thank you again. You bet. You bet. It's my pleasure. All right. So, Charity, before we dig into a lot of, you know, topics about your expertise, one one tradition here in the show is we want to focus on your story. What influenced you or who influenced you to, you know, to be in this um, field of expertise, to be this awesome person that we have right now. So the floor is yours. <laughs> Please. That's share very your story. kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of in- influencers that really pushed me this way. And I would say it's been a long journey. And we can go back to where it began. But what got me to start taking action was I had a position where I was. Um, I, I was managing a podcast actually. So this is fun to be on a podcast because I've been the behind the scenes person, you know, um, ma- the flow and the production of it. And it was called the journey of an entrepreneur podcast. It was a friend of mine and he, um, he invited me to be, to be the co-host. And at that time I was like, no, I, I don't really know anything about being an entrepreneur. Who am I to be your co-host? So he did it and then eventually got a different co-host. But I was, I was listening to all, soaking up all of these interviews. And every one of these entrepreneurs who he interviewed had said, you know what? I didn't know what I was doing. I was scared of, out of my mind, but I just kept taking action. And I heard that over and over again. And I thought, wow. I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) I'm scared to take action. So I know what it feels like to be an entrepreneur. And as I looked back at my journey, I realized I've already been on this journey. I just dismissed what I had overcome, what had transpired. And so just listening to those other people's stories, just like what you're doing here, Jan, sharing stories of people taking imperfect action. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because that's really, I could tell you, I could drop names of inspirers, um, influencers, but really it was those personal stories of people taking imperfect action that inspired me to take imperfect action as well. Wow. And I totally agree because, you know, I started practically in the same situation based on your story. You know, um, of course you have a dream that you want to start a business. You want to go um, change your life and everything. But once you're there, it's like, wait, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Am I doing right? And you have mentors. Yes. You have people that influence you, people that talk you, uh, talk to you and, and share stories, opinions, sometimes good effects, sometimes bad effect. But you know, it's funny because you're right. Some, there was a point in life as a you know as an entrepreneur as a business man you th- you don't have a clue of what you're doing yes in in paper you have a you know you have everything written down but in reality how can you explain this that you have a, a plan but you don't know what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a really good question. And I think the how I'm going to do this trips up most entrepreneurs, um, if not all of us. The how, like, how am I going to do this? Because I have this vision. I see this mountain in the distance, right? That I feel like I'm going to climb. And as I take those steps, I feel like there's darkness. I have this little flashlight and this is as far as I can see, but I can kind of see the silhouette of the mountain, right? In the darkness. And so what happens is we say, I don't know all the steps and I don't have my climbing gear. So, you know, never mind. It's too much. But here's what happens. You can see this far with your flashlight. You take a step and that's when you see the next step. So it's only when you move forward. But then here's the other interesting thing that happens. When we, we take all these steps and we see the next one and the next one, we keep moving forward and we have that goal, that vision, we see that mountain. What happens when we get close to that mountain? We're like, we are on the base of success, you know, right at the, at the base, ready to scale this mountain. We look up and we say, oh my gosh, this is too much. I can't do it. So, you know, the fear of success can, kicks in, the fear of failure, all, all of that. And it's been kicking in all the, throughout the way. However, if you keep taking those steps forward, forward, a lot of times what I find is there's actually a path, an easier path that gets you around and up the mountain. You do not have to scale it <laughs> finger hold over finger hold over finger hold. Um, but you've got to keep going even past when you are scared out of your mind and you want to bail again. Then you see, oh, wow, here's, here's kind of a twist in the pathway that's going to get me up there on the backside of the mountain. Or there's a trap door that opens up a whole new world that I hadn't planned because I, that's, but that's where I was going. So that's why it's important to shoot for the stars, right? Or aim for that vision, that mountain, because you will not discover what you were meant to do if you sit here and wait till you have it all figured out. Um, and sometimes what you plan to do is not what you end up doing. And that's part of the journey. That's part of discovering who you are and what your purpose is and what you're meant wow. to do. Wow. Wow. Yes. Um, again, I can only speak for myself, but in a way, um, that, that's uh, in a way that what happened to me before. Um, I've you know started a couple of businesses. It didn't pan out. Um, but I have that goal. My goal, my, my my vision is still that. But I'm starting different. That's what I thought. You know, to for me to achieve that vision, I need to start this one, and then it didn't work. So okay, move to the next project. Start this. Didn't work. I went to another country as an employee. You know, you need money to start something. Um, and and I agree to what you said. You know, you will fail. You will fall. And then you get back again, you start something, you figure out that, hey, now I don't need to scale to reach that dream. I can go this route and achieve the same thing, right? And you, you will not find those um, paths unless you take the risk and you really embrace the failure and you learn from it. Because, uh, I mean, that's what happened to me. I, now I am a digital and entrepreneur i have a team we 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 build something but looking back that's not possible if i didn't you know there's a there's two side here first is ah i failed so many times the the other side is now that's the reason why i failed I learned from, from that situation and that's the reason why I'm here. And I'm not saying that where we are right now is the final stage, right? It, it's, it's, again, it's a setup for something bigger. And I love what you said, you know, you will find ways, paths that are unique and, you know, surprisingly, even you will be surprised that, hey, this is a cool path and, and I learned something new. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And, um, let me throw in this, a big part of, you know, that journey, because I remember you said that you keep standing up, pushing forward and reaching that goal, that dream. And a big part of that for me is your mindset and yourself. You need to improve yourself. You need to improve your thinking, 
the way you act, the way you move, the way you speak, the way you, you know, you do your, your work, your business. And that is why I'm excited to learn from uh, an awesome personality like you. What are those tips that you can share for us to improve that, you know, uh, not only as an entrepreneur, but, uh, you know, in, 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 in life in general? How can you improve yourself? You know, personal development tips from an expert. It, this is not based on opinion. This is based on, you know, facts and, and years of experience. Please do share us your awesome, awesome learning. And I'm really excited. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, you know, there, there's so many ways. There's lots of ways that we could, you know, work on the mindsets, but to simplify it, you really, there are only two states of mind. You're in a powerful state or you're in a state of survival. And so a state of survival, what does that feel like? That's reactionary. If you look on social media, people are in a survival state, reactionary. There's the fight or flight, you know, stress response mode. It shuts off our ability to think and reason. And we are just reacting. So um uh, Charity, Charity, excuse me. Um sorry to cut you. Um no? is that is that negative? Is that bad? Because I'm I'm receiving some text from the team <laughs> who's what? watching also on the side. And 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 they're saying, because we we have the split screens on a on, on, uh, next area. Okay, yeah. Is that bad though? Because you mentioned, you know, you triggered millennial. <laughs> generation <laughs> you, you said that <laughs> yeah on, on a social media on, on social media you know you, you especially in facebook and i i think yes. not on instagram more yeah, not but so most mostly on facebook right you post something and then like what you've said people will react now my question is is that good or is that bad is that something negative that's a good question so think about your intent the if you are reacting to defend your position then you're closing off and you're not you're not um in a powerful state where you can learn and give and receive connection is the most basic human need of humans and when we are just reacting like oh no there's a wall no you're wrong here's why that is that is not healthy. It's, it doesn't serve us. It really enslaves us because then I'm digging in my hills and defending my position and the way, but being in survival mode isn't bad in and of itself because our brains are programmed to protect us. So if, if, if I'm out camping and there's something in the woods, my mind, it, I'm not going to be thinking, oh, what could it be? You know, let me think this through. Let me reason. No, my body wants to react to get the crap out of there <laughs> to save my life. So it is not a bad thing in and of itself, but it's, are we reacting in life and trying to defend our position to the point where I am closed off from what Jan has to say, from what these millennials have to say, from what Democrats or Republicans have to say? Yeah, that's a trigger word, right? But um, there's, I, I think what I find is, you know, people have, people have debt. I do believe, and I've seen this, people have good intent, but based on that perspective, you know, you're right about your perspective, but here's what happens. We have each have this piece of a puzzle. Okay. So let's say you have, what's your favorite color, Jan? <laughs> uh, well, my branding color, yellow, yellow. Yellow. Okay. Let's say your, the piece of your puzzle is yellow. Okay, there you go. And what yellow means to you versus what yellow means to me. And let's say my piece of the puzzle is purple. And then we have a red piece and all these different colors. And we can, I can sit here all day and say, you know what? Purple is better than yellow. And here's why. And here's what it does for me. You could talk about yellow. But until we put all these pieces of the puzzle together, say, huh, why is yellow so important to you? What do you love about yellow? How does that influence you? What are your stories? You know, and, and then we put these pieces of the puzzle together. The analogy here is when we put them together, actually, those are the colors of a sunset. Oof. And so we miss the whole picture by defending our little piece. 
and and I'm not saying your piece is insignificant. I shouldn't have said little piece. Our piece, your piece is significant. Your perspective is significant. It is important. And you're right about how you see it and how you've experienced it. But what if I learn how amazing yellow is to you and your experience and not just yellow, your experience with relationships, your experience, like, why do you think that? Why do you believe that? Why do you feel that? Why do you want that, Jan? When I come to understand that, then we collectively put our pieces, our perspectives together. And that beautiful sunset is something we would have missed. And we often miss when we are defending our perspective at the cost of learning about everyone else's. And it doesn't mean I have to agree with you. I can still hold my perspective and be true to who I am and yet have compassion and appreciation for why you like what you like and why you feel the way that you feel. Um, you know, we are, we are all pieces of the puzzle of humanity. And so reacting from a survival mode it helps us short term, it saves our life, it protects us, but it, it's so important to take some deep breaths to get the blood flow back to our brain so that we can think clearly and, and start asking those difficult questions, have difficult conversations, because that's really how we find solutions to, to our biggest problems and challenges is when we are coming together and learning from each other. Ooh. Connect, don't convince. Oh, I love that, connect. Don't convince. Wow, powerful. And uh, Charity, I think let's 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 backtrack a bit. Um, I, I like what you've said about you know you you explain about you know on social media people acting in survival mode and and being so defensive. Um, well, why do you think so? It's like that. I mean. What what I notice again, this is uh, something not factual. <laughs> this is just me. Um, the things that I observe in social media, what when, for example, politics. You mentioned Republicans and Democrats, right? We're not going to be talking about go- politics, but just an example. You say something, um, Group A something, say something, and they don't want to be challenged, right? But like what you said, both have rights to say something based on their opinion. That's their page. That's their account. That's their right. But, you know, people tend to, once they say something, they don't want to be challenged, but they want people to agree with them. So that's where the tension is. And I I love what you explain. But then first, it demands or it needs high discipline to figure that this what is happening is wrong right if this is not healthy let me change that it's not wrong it's it's not healthy it's it's tiring it's stressful right imagine you debating justifying and it's never ending because the other side won't accept the other side will be justifying what they think is right. Like what your example is, the color yellow for me and the purple for, you know, for, for you, for example. In, you know, how, how, why, first question is, why is this happening? And second is, um, does it need, you know, high discipline for people to figure out that this is not beneficial? That's a really good question. And I, um, why does this happen? There, there's many reasons, but just to, just off the cuff, one of the things is our communication really, you know, 30% of our communication is the words. So you're getting 30% of someone's intent and the meaning simply by reading. So how many times has it, have you um, seen people post something And then people are debating and they're like, that is not even what I meant. So there's a lot of misunderstanding when we're trying to have critical debates on social media just with our words. So that's one thing you're you're we're setting ourselves up for failure if when we are having these heated discussions on social media to begin with. I'm not saying it can't happen. I've had some great debates from people who believe completely different from what I do. 
But here's, um, here's just a tip. Here's one phrase that is like magic that opens up the conversation. And one thing that you said was before I share the phrase is you said that people want to say their piece, but then they don't want to be challenged on it. And, you know, there's this human nature to believe that we know more than we think to think we know more than we actually do. Right. And so I want to say it, but if, if I'm challenged on it, then I have to defend what I just said. And I don't want to defend it because, you know, I just wanted to say it. <laughs> I want to be right. And there's that need that is not a need. It's a culture of it's a human nature, really, to I want to be right, because I feel like if I'm not right, then I'm wrong. And that's another cultural conditioning where we feel like, you know, in school, if I didn't get the right answer, then I'm wrong. If, if my, my game is better than your game, my dad is better than your game, your dad, my policy is better than your policy. And so we, we have this, you know, either, or it's, it's either this way or that way. But when we put our pieces of the puzzle together, we say, Whoa, it's not anything like I thought it was because I, and I can't see that unless I'm open to learning from each other. So to go back to that phrase, when someone challenges you or says something, and sometimes it's reactionary, they just post something um, because they don't, you don't have that time to respond. I think um, there was a TEDx talk. It was the same time when I spoke on the same stage and he had said that it'd be nice if, you know, if you could post something, but then there would be a timer before it would actually go live. Oh yeah, so that would be cool. Go, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to retract that because mm. we post it and we go and, you know, do something else and then people respond and then it, you're sucked into this <laughs> drama that you didn't, you didn't intend. You may or may not have. There are people who do like to stir up drama, but I think for the most part, people just want to share. They want to be heard. They want to be understood. And so they share something and then they're destroyed because people are reacting to that. So here's the phrase, Jan, you come to me and you challenge my belief, like charity, you know, maybe you're having a, you know, you wouldn't do this. You're a nice guy. So maybe someone is reacting. You're not that people are not nice. More people, some people are self-aware. I'm going to say sometimes right, right, they're right. self-aware. And I will say that I have said things. I was not self-aware enough to go. Oh, that was E. Why did I say that? So, okay. So I will admit I am part of the problem too. Sometimes where you, you say something and it might come across as someone is bashing you. So here's the response. Just take a deep breath and say, that's interesting. Tell me more about what makes you say that. That's it. And then shut the heck up <laughs> and listen because, and I, I did this. There was a, and I'll tell you what happened. So it was about my religion. There was, uh, I went to lunch with a friend, a friend and the guy she was dating and we had a nice lunch. I didn't know him that well. I was just kind of like, this is kind of weird energy here, but it's okay. I was just trying to have, you know, a hot conversation. And then he slid his food over at one point and he leaned in and he said, you know what? If you knew what I knew, you wouldn't believe what you believe. You are a sheep. And like he bashed and just went on and on about my religion. And I, I first of all, I was like, I want to punch him, right? And we feel like that. I'll punch you. <laughs> How dare you? And then second of all, I was irritated by my friend, like, you know he thinks this way, and you're allowing this. Like, I was feeling frustrated that she wouldn't defend me. And I was at a point where I was consciously thinking, you know what? I teach about having difficult conversations. So who am I to not practice what I'm saying? So I took some deep breaths as I was just, and so I listened for his emotion. Like he's frustrated, he's angry. Um, and then what I let him spew it out. And I just, I was like, okay, I'm not going to take it personally. Cause there's something going on inside of him that is causing him to think that he is right about why he, you know, the experience of maybe why he thinks that doesn't mean what he says is true but his perspective is true to him. So I took several deep breaths. And then when he finished, I said, I just, you know, as coolly as I could, I said, Oh, that's, that's very interesting. Um, I've never heard some of those things. Tell me what it is that made you think, makes you think that, you know, tell me your experience that has made you think that I can't remember how I said it. Basically, you know, tell me more, tell me more about why you think that. And then he just kind of looked at me like, 
I wasn't prepared for the next step. Like I just wanted to tell you what I had, what I had to say about you. And I wanted <laughs> to back down and tell me I'm right. Yeah. And I was like, tell me more. He, he just kind of repeated what he said. And I was like, right. Oh, and I kept asking him, that's interesting. Tell me more about that. Tell me about this specifically, you mm. know, why you said that. And I really was curious to learn, not to defend, not to defend, just curious to learn. And he fizzled out at the, like, it was 15 minutes of him just like, well, because of this. I was like, well, so tell me, tell me why that, you know, tell me more about that. And he, he backed down, he fizzled out. And I real, and then after he got um, fizzled out, I said, well, that, thank you for sharing that. I can tell you've thought a lot about that and you have some strong feelings about that. I appreciate that you were willing to just share with me and let me ask you questions. So I have a question for you. Is it okay with you if I share with you my experience with my religion? And then he was like, well, yeah, okay. Because he, I had heard him, I heard him out, I listened to him, I didn't defend it. So then I had a chance to say, here's, here's why I love it. Here's, here's the benefits that I've received. And I don't expect you to believe the same way as I do, but this is why it works for me. This is why I love it. And then his what, was his, oh. what, what is his reaction? He was dumbfounded. <laughs> he was like, huh, you know, and, and then I was able to say, you know, and his sister is the same religion as me who she converted right. to that. And so I said, you know, and when I look at your sister, she's a very intelligent person because she was saying I'm unintelligent, but she, you don't think for yourself. I was like, your sister, you know, maybe you're feeling a little betrayed. Is it possible that you're feeling a little betrayed because she changed religions? Right. She is an intelligent person. You know, would you say that she is? And he's like, oh yeah, she is. She is. And then at the end, he's like, you know what? You are intelligent too. Um, and he didn't apologize for anything said, but he just was like, oh, okay. And then I was like, well, you know what? I need to get going. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm kind of done here. I'm done here. I don't like the way I was treated, but I was so proud of, I wouldn't say proud of myself. I'm proud that this actually works. Uh, uh, grateful. I'm so grateful that this actually works. You know, some people, maybe it won't work on, but for the most part, people will be grateful to share why they think it is, or they'll fizzle out and say like, well, I don't, I actually don't know. Right. So I love that. I love that charity. I, I love that. Um, uh, example that you use now uh what because because remember what i said earlier this this um this technique i believe needs a lot of it requires or how can i make it make it intense it demands more discipline it's not just you know oh i listened to her story i can do that Maybe once or maybe twice, but you know, it's not like that. It requires discipline, a proper renewal of how you think, how you assess the situation, how you act, like what you said, right? First, first reaction is like, what? I'm going to punch you in the face. But no, you think three steps ahead. You analyze, okay, now, you know, it could be, how can I disarm this conversation or how can I just, you know, be respectful because after all, my friend is uh, connected to this person, right? So that thinking doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> and I'm excited. I'm excited for you to share basic tips, Charity, basic tips on how our viewers, including me, our listeners, to, you know, practice this healthy uh, way of having a conversation and I believe if we can harness this this technique you know conversation would be more it would be healthier it will be rounded by morality respect and love and and, and that's a good thing <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I love that. That's such a great question. And first of all, to reiterate what you said, it demands discipline. Absolutely. That's, that's put that on a quote. <laughs> it demands conversations, demand discipline. They really do. And I think, you know, it kind of goes down to, am I trying to be right here? You know, a lot of times what triggers is our ego because I feel like, well, 
if he's right, then I'm wrong. And we, we fight to be right at the expense of relationships. And, you know, how do you sum that ability to have discipline up in, in one podcast? Because it took me, you know, I've been on this journey for 20 years and it's not something like you said, that comes overnight. You don't just wake up and say, Oh, I'm going to be disciplined. Uh, but probably the simplest way that I could say it is it is a choice. Honestly, we feel like everything I do, oh, it's going to take me 20 years to learn this new habit. But honestly, when, as soon as you make a decision, the fight is over. So if I decide, okay, whatever Jan says today, and you're going to have to prime your mind every day, like, okay, my decision today, I choose to connect rather than con convince. So if somebody is saying something that I disagree with and I am having this visceral response where I want to get physical or I want to run away, fight, fight, flight, or freeze, right? It's the stress response mode because we feel threatened. That's really what's happening. So if you recognize that this is just a, 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 a this is a physiological response that happens when we feel threatened. So our ego feels threatened. And when you recognize, okay, that is the response because I feel threatened take some deep breaths. First of all, like go look up breath work, the benefits of breath work. You will be, you know, they use it. Navy seals use it. This is proven technology to help you have a clear mind breath work, take some deep breaths and say, okay, you know, there's something coming up for me that probably needs to be healed or that, you know, this is when I'm feeling a response to somebody, there's something going on inside of me that I, that I need to evaluate. So recognize that, so just so don't point fingers at them like, oh, it's their fault that I'm feeling this way. No, you know, we are responsible for how we respond and what happens on the inside. Um, I think the, so make a decision that you're going to connect rather than convince. And let me tell you, here's an, an analogy that will help you gain that awareness because awareness is the half the battle. If you have that awareness, then you can look around and say, oh, okay, this is what I can change about what I'm doing. But most 85% of people are not self-aware. Those are the statistics. They think they are. 90% of people think they are, but <laughs> they're, they're not. And it doesn't mean you can't learn that skill. So, you know, it, it, there's always a level of self-awareness that you can improve on. So to get back to that, think about um, if you're driving down the car, driving down the road, okay? So... I'm driving and I have a friend from this remote village who has never seen vehicles or electricity, nothing. Okay. We're driving down the road and he's just marveling at, wow, what is this? You know, then I hear the police siren coming up, pulling up behind me. What happens inside of me? I'm like, oh crap, I'm going to get pulled over. What was I doing wrong? I was speeding. So I'm feeling this response, right? Because just because of the light, I haven't even heard the siren. Let's, let's say I see, I see the light behind me and I'm feeling this. My friend who's never experienced a policeman, he's like, whoa, that's beautiful. Wow, look at that. So our experience really shapes the way and why we respond and it all comes back from our, to our thoughts. Our thoughts create feelings and our feelings create, you know, our actions and results. So if you hate your results, consider what you're thinking because your feelings will drive what you do or do not do. So understanding that concept of what someone says, someone may not even respond to it. Just like my friend who didn't respond to the police light, the same phrase the same sentence I might have this response where I am ready to deck somebody <laughs> but it's because of my experience and that thought that happens before like oh crap I'm gonna get pulled over oh no was I speeding so our thoughts create those feelings so remember no matter what's said the events are neutral it's how we are responding to it because of the way we're thinking about it that creates that trigger so if you feel like someone is attacking you yeah, there people. Do, there are situations where they are absolutely out of line, and it gets ugly. But a lot of times, people say something because they're they believe it, and then we we have a response. So remember that that response is is not their responsibility; it's yours. 
it's your choice um, in how you respond. You need to take responsibility for that. So how do we do that? Take a deep breath and then recognize that. Um, uh, so in my book, I talk about changing your lens. So here's, um, here's one way to look at it. Like literally, this is um, literally imagine, you know, you're wearing a pair of sunglasses. And if you, I don't know if you experience, have experienced an eclipse before and wearing the eclipse glasses. Yeah, there was one a few years ago. So when we put on those eclipse glasses, this brilliant, amazing, blazing sun in the sky, what does it look like, Jan? When you look at the sun through the glasses. White, yeah. Like a white, like it looks like a moon. Yeah, like yeah. it's used to a tiny little white dot in the yeah, distance, yeah. right? It, mm. it makes it smaller. It looks mm. so much smaller. And so when we look, when we're looking through a lens of judgment, when we look through a lens of fear, when we look through a lens of doubt, lens of ego, like I have to be right, then that is skewing the way that we are seeing things. You know, like what really is there is reduced to a tiny little dot in the distance. Like, oh, that person, they don't know what they're talking about. We do that to ourselves too. Like, oh, what am I? I don't have it all figured out, right? As an entrepreneur, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm looking at myself through a lens of doubt and I feel small. I feel incapable. I feel minimized. Your thoughts shape the way that you interpret the world. And that lens, that lens through which you look shapes the way you view the world. So one thing I talk about is you imagine, like, how, do you, how am I feeling right now? I am feeling threatened. Okay, what lens am I looking through? I must be looking through a lens of ego or judgment. So here's one thing you can do. Imagine, just close your eyes and imagine, like, I've got these lenses and I'm, like, removing these lenses. I'm taking them off. Give them to your higher power. Throw them down to Mother Earth. Just imagine removing those lenses and then choose to look through a lens of love. And wow. Say, so that, and yeah, there you go. So, and then you can say like, how can I love this person through it? This guy's bashing on me. Clearly he's got pain that he's got his lenses he's looking through and he's feeling that pain and he's bashing me. Like, how can I love him through this? Mm. Listen to him. Right. Wow. Solid, solid <laughs> point. And I agree. I mean, I, I want to support that. Um, Yes, it, it, you know, whatever you say, it will not reflect the, the person that you're talking to. It will reflect who you are, where that words are coming from, right? Um, I always say this. Actually, it, it's my favorite uh, thing, statement to say. Intent comes before content, meaning the thoughts come first. There's an intention inside our minds connected to our hearts. If your intent is to prove that you're right, like what you've said, then whatever you say, it will lead to that because that's part of your lens, the lens that you're wearing, right? But if your intent, the one inside of you is bounded and rooted to love, to respect, and to, you know, just give value, then that will also resonate through whatever actions may be words written or, or spoken that will be visible in that. And, and, and lastly, um, you know, le, le, it's, it's easier said than done, but acting upon the height of emotions that messes up a lot of things. <laughs> Let's avoid to, you know, make, make actions make judgments on the height of our emotions it will really messed up things so again easier said than done but put all of those points in the bank wrapped with the learning that came from you wow it's gonna be a better world yes it's a fairy tale <laughs> in reality there there are few of people like us who thinks that way but that's the reason why we have hope and that's the reason why we have faith that everything will turn out to be what was intended to be. 
you know, uh, it was created in the liking of beauty and love. Something happened, you know, people tend, it's a story, long story, but, you know, we are, you know, we are given this opportunity to think and to make a difference. And I love what you've shared. Imagine, imagine, um, Charity, if, if people will learn and really put their hearts and mind to discipline themselves. There's going to be a healthier way of communication, respect, uh, and, and just pure love, right? So again, thank you so much for sharing those wonderful points. Thank you so much for giving us an insight that I believe is what we need in this generation and the generation to come. Thank you so much, Charity. You're welcome. Thank you. This has been a pleasure. I love your heart, Jan. Thank you for doing what you do. This was a pleasure to have this conversation. I appreciate it. We are not done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were wrapping up. <laughs> so actually, we're done in the part that we, we are serious. We're talking about you know points, learnings, value. Now, this is the part that we play a game, Charity. Okay. All right. Yes. So the, the, objective of, the objective of this game is, you know, for our viewers, for our listeners to see that and for them to know that, yes, we, we are experts in our field. We talk about serious stuff, but we are also human beings. Sometimes we just want to be silly, shallow. We don't know what to say. We laugh. And that is the part of this show that we show that, right? I love it. <laughs> All right. So the name, the title of this uh, game is The Creative Fast Talk. We will ask you questions that are random and you are not allowed to, you know, spend time in thinking what the answers would be. <laughs> the first word that comes in, this is funny because you were just saying a while ago that you need to think before you speak. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but don't worry. I am. I am not going to. You know, uh, lead you into an argument. <laughs> <laughs> not worried about it. <laughs> uh, so what, whatever the first, whatever word comes first into your mind, shoot. All right. All right. Ready. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little nervous. I will admit, I'm like, oh! <laughs> okay. But you know what? I'm open. I'm open. All right. I'm human. All right. All right. Don't worry. Don't uh, worry. Go. It's all good. First question. Yeah. Very easy. We will start with an easy part. All right. First question is your favorite color. Purple. Purple. Okay. Passenger or driver? Driver. Mm. Hot. Unless or... I need. To sleep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hot or cold? Ooh, hot. The mountains or the beaches? Mountains. Okay. If you're an animal, what animal would you be and why? I'd be an eagle. Okay, because why? Because I can soar and have that perspective. And one thing I've heard about eagles is they, as they age, their wings break down. So they go through this process of, plucking all their wings, they wash in the stream, and then they go to a place and other eagles see that like, wow, you're in this process of regrowth and rebirth and they will bring them food, they will just support each other. So I, I just love that we all go through that regrowth. We all go through that, I'm beat down, I need to just purge what's not working for me and regrow and rebuild. It's a constant journey. So um, eagles, eagles definitely. Wow, I love that. Wow, Thanks. we had that um, point from National Geographic about eagles. Very good. Thank you, Charity, for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> A National Geographic correspondent here. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Next. There you go. <laughs> the cinemas or Netflix? The cinemas. All right. So because that is your answer, following question is, name your top three movies of all time of all time mm. the princess bride mm -hmm. inception Ooh. and i really loved cinderella the new cinderella and i'll tell you 
because you're not asking for why though. <laughs> yes, feel free. <laughs> it was like, oh, hey, he's a prince and hi, he's going to save my life. It was just like, he, they were both intelligent, having com- communicating and it just showed like a real development of a, a, a more realistic development of a relationship. Um, and I, and she was firm. She was confident in who she was. Um, she had to grow into that. And I, so that's just one that comes to mind as well. So wow. Prince of Right, Inception and Cinderella, the movie. <laughs> the movies that you shared are very um, in contrast, I right? <laughs> I know. I have very diverse tastes. <laughs> but I love in- Inception. I-, I love that movie. Okay, since you mentioned that, I'm going to throw in a follow-up question with that. This is not included in the list. What is your take in the ending of that movie, Inception? Uh, there's there's two there's two okay I'm, I'm not gonna say that i'm just gonna wait for your answer what is your take on the ending you see the what's that thing that keeps spinning in the end this oh, right that? yeah so that's yeah uh, that, that's the last scene if i remember it correctly right it, it, it's it's kind yeah. of yeah yeah uh, it leaves you like huh. yeah what's your take on that my take on that is just the questions, is this, is this reality or is this my perception of reality? And that's like a question that we can ask ourselves every day. Is this really what's happening or is this my perception and my response to what's happening? And that's a movie that I just, it makes me think long after it just like, Whoa, you know, I loved it. I loved it. It was mind blowing. All of it. Nice. I, I love you. I love you, Charity. Very, very well said. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to the club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, this is a, a weird question, so brace yourself. Soap or toothbrush? <laughs> toothbrush. <laughs> toothbrush. All right, okay, okay. Your dream superpower and why? My dream superpower would be the power to fix things. Mm. Okay. Because then I fix or heal relationships, fix or heal broken hearts, like really just uh-huh. the power to heal, I would say, in the way that just heals people at a core level to where they believe in themselves mm. and are able to stand tall and, and be comfortable with their perfectly imperfect self. So the power to heal. Right, right. In that, okay, in that nice. Matter. Next, what is the weirdest food you ever tried? <laughs> on a trip to cambodia oh last i summer. love cambodia i love cambodia oh i can't wait to go back yeah, my brother-in-law uh, so my sister-in-law is cambodian and we went to this market and there were these little <laughs> they look like octopus <laughs> octopi how do you plural of octopus <laughs> they were floating in there and um just lots of weird little creatures it, up until that meal, everything we ate was amazing. I loved it. But that one was just like, I, I don't know what these are. <laughs> food poisoning from that place. And later my sister-in-law said, don't go to that market. Everybody knows that's not where you eat. We ate, we ate, we were there for 10 days and never had a problem. It was the last day. Oh, we were, oh, that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> that poor airplane we were on flying back. We were so sick. Um, so that was the weirdest thing. I don't even know what it was. Right. But I don't like it when my food is like. Yeah, I've looks- seen that, but I I, I <laughs> can taste that also because I, I I like adventurous food, you know. But 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 there's a up to a certain extent only. <laughs> yeah. But, but do you love spicy food? I love spicy food, and my kids have very diverse taste buds because wow. of that. Like mm. I will. I love cooking ethnic food wow. and I don't always cook it well, <laughs> but I have a friend that has said that, so that's good. Um, we just like, we'll have a cultural night. Like, Hey, today we're having food from, you know, Mexican dish, like a true Mexican dish, or here's a dish from, um, what else have I done? I've done Indian food. I've Ooh. done Cambodian food. Um, so yeah, just, I love, I, I love culture. I love learning. So it, it's fitting, I guess, that I, I love trying different ethnic foods. Well, you should plan, you know, <laughs> when, when, when this pandemic is all over and we're all good, you should plan to visit the Philippines. We will, you will have a good uh, cuisine for you to try. 
I would love to. I would love to. Yeah, let's let's make that happen. Thank and then you. We're gonna we're gonna do a, a live uh live podcast episode. Oh, that would be so fun! <laughs> Talking about husband and kids and the yes, ESC, yes, like, yes. And, and my wife is uh she's a chef and an entrepreneur, so. Wow! She would, awesome. she would love. See, I'm I'm saying that she would love to cook, even though she's <laughs> sleeping right now. Yeah, I'm volunteering here. Her. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that that's something that we can look forward. You know, um, just to relax, uh, eat, relax, and have fun. So yes, yeah. definitely. Sounds last good. Question, good. charity. Last question, and this is a a, a traditional something. Something that we always ask our guests here. This could be serious depending on what you're, how you're going to take this question, okay? Last question is, if you have the power to bring back someone back from the dead, who would it be and why? The power to bring back someone from the dead? Anyone. Could be a historical figure, a politician, a family member, a friend, anyone. <sighs> I'm just going to say my baby brother, because we lost him to suicide 10 years ago. Um, so I would love to have him here now. The interesting thing is because of his death, it just cracked open the dynamics of my family to where we are more connected and, and strong. Like we have grown through that tragedy. So I would like to keep the lessons and have him too. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And I'm yeah. sure wherever he is, he is very proud of you and what you have accomplished. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All right. So um, that was the creative fast talk. Thank you so much, Charity, for you know answering those silly questions and being such a good sport. I know you have a lot of releases, your social media accounts, any online events or promotions. Please uh, feel free to promote it here. The floor is yours. Well, thank you. Uh, I, I have a book. It's called Perspectives, 30 Days to a New Life Through a New Lens. It tells, you know, a portion of my story and three very simple yet powerful steps to help you uh, reset your mindset, really. So it's available on Amazon. Um, I, d uh, I just completed an event called Fueling Confident Women, like fuel the fire, fueling confident women. So we are repackaging that so that you can purchase that event as well. Um, that's not up yet. Those are the two things. And if you're interested in diving deeper into this journey of personal development to empowering your mindset and getting from where you are to where you want to be. And if, you know, a lot of people don't know what they want, actually, a lot of people know what they don't want. If you're looking for clarity, if you're looking for confidence, if you're looking for more success, click on my calendar. You can look at my link tree. Um, click my calendar and let's schedule an appointment and we'll just, we'll just have a conversation like this. Like we'll sit down have a little virtual drink together and we'll dive into where you're feeling stuck, what's working, what's not working. And you'll come away with some steps that you can take. And then if you want to uh, be coached by me, I do do coaching. So I am, it would be an honor to be part of your journey. So reach out to me if you're interested, if you'd like more. There you go, guys. Please do connect with Charity. She will help you in your journey in business and in life. So again, Charity, thank you so much for spending the time with us here in the Creative Fast Talk and in the podcast. This is Jan Santos saying, guys, smile, be happy, and have a positive outlook in life. Thank you for being with us here on the Creative Talk Podcast. I'm your host, John Santos. Don't forget to listen and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. See you again, always.